Hi everybody, today I have my Tamron 24-70 f2.8 G2 version. As you know, because you probably researched this video, they don't come out out of production with like a great focusing. So autofocus is not bang on. So what you can do is buy this little unit here that you see attached to my lens. It's a tap-in unit from Tamron for Canon lenses. So it is not super intuitive how to use it. So today I'll show you how to set it up, how to play with it on the computer, and how to actually adjust your lens and what type of tools you need to do it. So with that in mind, let's go and have a look. Okay, so I'm at the computer right now, and I got my lens plugged into the tap-in unit. And as you can tell, it's a fairly simple window with lots of values and everything. So as you, you can tell on top here, there is the lens that I'm using, the 24 to 70. If you have a different lens, it'll be right there. And there's the firmware update button. So press on it. If there's any update, it will come up. Now, unfortunately, there's no update for this lens. So you got to do everything manually. So today I'm going to show you how to use the focus adjustment tab. I won't be going to the focus distant limiter or the custom setup. So that's other thing you can do. But all I wanted to do with this lens is make sure that it focused properly. And this is what we're going to do today. So first off, let's take a look on the right here. You can tell there's a camera. And then you have the backward minus 20, default 0, and forward plus 20. So those are the values that you see here, minus 6, minus 6, minus 7. So what it means really is if everything is sharp and it's at default at zero, it's perfect. If your image is sharp, let's say right here, so you, you should have something sharp in here, but sharp in front of it, I mean it's sharp in the minus values. And if it's sharp past your subject, then it's sharp in the plus values. So in this case, let's say we're going to take the minus 6 here at 24 millimeters. Mine was sharper past my subject. So I had to bring that back minus 6 notches to bring it back to where it should be. All right, hopefully that makes sense. But I'll show you again and make a little bit more sense with my setup. So then we're going to take a look here at the top bar. We get 1.25 feet or 0 0.35 meters, and that's my minimal focusing distance. Then you have your 3 feet, 1 meter, and then you have infinity. So once you look on your lens, on top of your lens right here, I'll show you, you have this, uh, those values are there. So that's a, like the, the focal distance, basically, that your lens is from your subject. After that, on the left here, you'll have 24 millimeters, 35 millimeters, 50, and 70 millimeters. So those are the values that you can adjust your lens with a specific lens. So we're going to try and do some tests at 24 millimeters, at 35 millimeters, 50, and 70. And we're going to choose one of the three categories here. So we're going to first start, I'll show you how to do it at like the minimal focusing distance of 1.25 feet or 0 0.38 meters. This is how I'm going to show you how to do it with. And then after that, you can do it at home with the, uh, the three feet and the infinity. Now, I haven't done the infinity because I live on a boat. And unfortunately, I don't have that much space inside my boat to test that. So I'll have to go outside in a bit and try it out. But so this is pretty much how it works. So we're going to make some tests at 24 millimeters. And if my distance is not bang on, then I'll have to adjust as you can tell there, I have minus six values because the focusing was too far forward. Okay, so that's for the software. Now, let's take this lens out of there and I'll show you my setup. But first, let's talk about the setup. So, what I'm gonna be using today is very simple. You can use different things. If you have proper like uh, uh, boards and, and, and things like that for calibra calibra calibration sorry, of your lenses and stuff at home, you use that. Now, I am using a uh, Nixrite uh, color uh, passport for photographer. The reason why I'm using this is because I can put it into a 90 degree first because it, it's easy to put it this way. And I have I got like a little 
meter little lines there. So it's easy for me to focus on this. So this will be my main focusing point. And as long as all these lines are clear and I know that this is in focus, then I'll be fine. Next off, I have a little Coast Guard uh, ruler. So your ruler is the best way to use. You'll need something in a 45 degree angle. So I like rulers because you have a value you can set. So in this case, I have inches set up and I have three inches set up right against my panel that I want to have in focus. So basically, when I shoot and I, my panel is in focus, number three should be in focus. I want this connection, this right here to be bang on focus. If two is in focus and that's it, everything else is blurry. So what that mean is my focus is too close from the camera. Therefore, my focus is in the minus values. Therefore, I will need to add numbers to my software to bring that focus back to where it should be. So all you need, you can use a book, you can use a box, whatever you feel like, and something in a 45 degree angle. So I highly suggest a ruler and something with a flat surface. So this is what I'm going to be using. Now I'm going to take this lens out of there and I'm going to put it onto my camera. And then we're going to find the right distance. So what I want to do first is I need to get to 0 0.38 meters of 1.25 feet in order to do the tests. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my camera on and then I will put the live view mode on and I'll turn my autofocus on manual focus and I will bring my ring until I get to 0 0.38 meters or 1.25 feet. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find, if you can zoom in to let your live view, it's even better. And I'm going to find the right distance where the three become in focus, which is about here. So I'm going to put this lens right here into my tripod. Something to keep in mind when you do the minimum value, you don't want to be too close. Otherwise, you will always be, you won't be able to focus by certain distance. So just get to your value. Your number three is sharp. This is sharp, but just back it up just a little tiny notch there and then try it with your ring. Uh, sorry, your ring to focus to see if it goes past before and after your mark, your number three in this case. And if it does, then it's perfect. You know, you got it bang on. So then I'm going to turn this on to autofocus. Okay, so I'm going to get everything set up perfectly. So this is the right distance, my lens, from my test setup here. So what I'm going to do here, I get off the live view mode, I'm going to choose like a small points of autofocus points and I'm going to make sure that it hits right here. So I want this to be in focus. I don't want this to be in focus. So I will take a single fo focal point or a small amount of focal point right in the middle of my screen on my live view mode. Okay. So then I'm going to go down a bit and then I'm going to focus somewhere else. And then I'm going to come back right to my panel close to the three. I'm going to take a few shots. So I'm at 24 millimeters right now. So I'm going to do that a few times. Then I'm going to go to 35 millimeters. I'm going to repeat the process. And then 50 millimeters. And then 70 millimeters. Okay. So now I know that my lens is adjusted because I just did it into the tap in, right? But let's just pretend that it is not calibrated yet. So there's two ways to do it. Take your memory card to your computer, go on Lightroom and have a look or use your lab view mode. In this case, I use my lab view mode because it was too much of a pain to take my camera there and take my lens and stuff like that. So my workflow was this. I was looking, let's say I was at 70 meters now. I was looking, I'm like, okay, it is sharp at number four inches. So I'm too far ahead. I need to bring that focus back to me. So I'll give it a value of minus five. So I took notes and these were my notes, complicated notes. So it takes a while to like several tries to make it right. So now this is done. 
I'm going to take my lens out. We're going to go in Lightroom quickly and I'll show you what it looked like with my tests. I'm going to put this lens back on. Okay. So if I go I'm in Lightroom right now, I'm going to take a look. See, this is my focal range for 50 millimeters. So let's start at uh, 24. So that's what it looks like. So I'm going to full screen it. So as you can tell on this one, it's actually not too bad. So if I zoom in, it's actually zoom in, sorry. This one is actually not too bad. The three's in focus, the panel's in focus, six looks good, four and two. So it's actually not too bad. So we're gonna go take another example. This was 35 millimeters. So you can tell the two is super sharp, but the four is not so sharp. So what that's telling me is three is my zero. It's where I want it to be sharp on either side equally. But in this case, two is sharp, four is not so sharp. So it's telling me is my focus probably happened around here instead of there. So what I'll have to do is give it a value towards upwards, so towards the plus value. So in this case, I would probably go and say, okay, I'm gonna add, let's say plus five first. So by adding plus five, my focusing next time probably gonna be above three or close to three. So it's, you can go all the way to 20. So give it a good five increments at first and then you can fine tune it with twos and ones. Okay, so then that's my 50 mil. Clearly on this one, four is blurry. Three start to get blurry and two is super sharp. So the focusing happened about here, about the two marks. And again, my panel is kind of sharp. So I always took two or three shots to make sure that it was okay. And by the way, I've done that made my lens wide open and close to f2.8 to f4 or whatever minimal amount you have on your lens. So in this case, in this one, I bumped this one plus 10 because I wanted that to be forward. So in this case, now you can tell my three is there. That's the 70 mil, but it focused way past behind. So I need to bring my value and the minuses back towards my three. So my focus about arrive about like at the four, four plus mark. So on this, I would probably give it like a minus 10 to bring the value back to three. And then in this case, after I've done the change, you can tell that now three is in focus, two is a tiny bit out of focus and four is totally out of focus. So 10 went from this, minus 10, should, I should say, sorry, went to this. So then at this point, I'm too much below my three, so I'm too close from the camera. So I would need to probably add two to this. So if we escape this and go back to my lens. So here it is. When you do your value, let's say 24 millimeters, we'll keep in mind it's minus six, but I can go around and do minus 10. Then the second shot, you say, okay, I need to add two to it. So you have plus eight, and then you keep going until you fine tune and you find everything works fine. So it's a long process. You need to go back and forth with your computer and then take the lens, bring it back to your computer, take the lens, and every lens are different, so I don't think that that's the value for another 2470. You need to do it yourself, unfortunately, at home and take a good hour or so to do it. So hopefully that answer a few questions how you do it. Just remember, you can use pretty much anything you need, that you want, sorry, at home to create your test uh, little panel here. Remember, you need something flat, something 45 degrees, and uh, yeah, you're just gonna go around and tweak. Uh, I highly suggest big increments at first and then small increments after that. And then take notes, that easy as that. So I'm winning for a Sony A7 Mark III. I'm one of those that's gonna jump from Canon to Sony. And then I'll have an adapter that I'm gonna put this lens on. So I'm super curious to know if the value will change once I use an adapter and if I use it with a different body. So we'll have to take a look because it's supposed to solve the problem with the lens. So I shouldn't have any issue. Once that's done, you should be good for, for good. You don't have to change any other thing with any other camera. So I'm curious to see and uh, if it's gonna work. And whatever I get my camera, I'll put a little comment below here so you know if it works or not. You can do adjustments as well 
in your camera. So any type of lens you own, you can put it in the Canon body and adjust the same way in the pluses and the minuses values. Now, if you've done that in the past and you got your tap in, make sure to reset those values at zero into your camera because you're gonna set up your lens with some values added to it. So if you use that lens with a different body, then your lens is gonna be all off. So make sure you reset your values at zero in your camera. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. It's fairly complicated and fairly simple at the same time. So if you have any questions, any comments, please let me know in the section below. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if you didn't like it. And once again, thanks for watching.